Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. Um, I want to talk about a Danish computer scientist called Mr. Agner Fogg. Now, I sometimes get questions. People ask me, uh, what's a good reference book to keep by your side if you're learning performance programming? And again and again, I'll pretty much answer the same thing. What you want to do is read Agner Fogg. Uh, he's written five manuals on performance programming. And I just wanted to make a few videos where we go through and test some of the ideas and just share the knowledge. Okay, the other thing that I want to mention before we go on, a new instruction set. Uh, he's called it ForwardCom and he's got a compiler out there that you can go and have a look at. The specs are out there in a document. So uh, I think I'll link to that in the bottom as well, down in the video description and have a bit of a read. Maybe compile some code, have a bit of a play around and see what he's suggesting. The idea with ForwardCom is to get rid of uh, the constant war that AMD and Intel have for defining modern new instructions to include in the x64 slash x86 hardware. What's happened over the years, this is sort of since about, uh, what would it be, since about MMX? I think Intel invented MMX way back when, would have been like 92 or 3 or something. Uh, Intel invented MMX, which is the first SIMD instruction set included in x86. It's a good little set, really, good little set. Uh, and then AMD come along and tried to invent um, floating point SIMD, and they introduced uh, 3D Now, it was called, uh, but that didn't take off. So Intel said, nah, we don't want to use 3D Now, we'll do something else, we'll do SSE instead. And AMD said, yeah, all right, good idea, we'll do SSE too. But what ends up happening is that the two companies fight for sort of space in the opcodes, in the machine code, and they, they, they battle for who gets to define the new uh, instruction sets uh, for us to use. And it's really becoming quite ridiculous. I mean, nowadays, a modern x64 CPU has something like maybe 2,000 or, or 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 instructions. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. If you read the um, AMD and Intel's programming manuals, they list all of the instructions. There's just thousands of them, uh, depending on how you count uh, your instructions. So Agnes suggests that this is not really... Um, long term going to work out. And what we really need to do is figure out a different modern uh, instruction set. We can learn from all of the mistakes that we've made in the past uh, in x86 and x64 and uh, move on with a modern, uh, less complicated instruction set. So he's invented ForwardCom or, or written the specifications for a new instruction set called ForwardCom. He's made a, um, a compiler, so you can go and have a look at that. You can read the specs for ForwardCom. Uh, go over to the website, get behind the dude, it's a brilliant idea. I gotta say, if uh, x64 was to fall, I mean, if something like ForwardCom can emulate x64 because it's so kind of uh, efficient and modern, uh, it would be bittersweet for me to say goodbye to the amazing x64. It's not efficient to code x64 assembly, it's just difficult, but... Um, <laughs> But it's fun, depending on your definition of fun. <laughs> so I thought it might be a good idea to just uh, share some of, uh, some of the ideas presented in these manuals and test them out live on camera and see what happens. I can give you a hint. Um, your code goes faster. <laughs> okay, so if we jump over here to C++, we can have a bit of a look at our first optimization technique. This is a brilliant little technique, and I think it's something that programmers should consider when they're coding, uh, especially in C++, uh, but other languages probably as well, your C-sharps and Javas. Okay, so I've just got a little C++ program here, and uh, it's got a little lookup table. Look me up, baby. So this technique is all about lookup table. So if you've got a function, something like look me up, baby, just here, and it's nothing but a lookup table. We're not gonna be changing the values of any of these uh, elements in this yep array just here. It's just a lookup table. Okay, so we've got this lookup table function for floats. Uh, we've got another lookup table example for ints. We've got one for string. And down here, I'm just running through uh, a call to one of these functions a hundred million times and timing it with uh, your ctime clock function. Okay, so let's see what happens first of all if we run uh, look me up, baby, uh, without any changes. Okay, so we're getting a time of quite slow, really. Yeah, we're getting a time of almost half a second just there, 434 milliseconds. Very good. Okay, so what we're going to do, the suggestion from Agnafog's manual in, uh, I think it's section 7.1 of manual number one, uh, the C++ optimizations, he suggests that whenever you've got a lookup table in your function, you want to mark it as static. Alrighty, we're marked as static. Let's run again and see what happens. 
Would you look at that? It's almost four times faster. Wow. That's pretty astonishing, really. Okay, so that's about four times faster. Look Me Up Baby is running about four times faster if we mark that array as static. Let's see what happens if we do the same with the int just here, the int array. Uh, so I'll come down here and I'll change the function call. Um, okay, so we'll run it first of all. Look Me Up int. Alrighty, so we're getting, I don't know, 220 maybe? 220 millis? 227 milliseconds. So we're approaching a quarter of a second maybe, but let's mark it as static as suggested by Mr. Fogg and see what happens. Look at that! That's flying! What is that, like six times faster? Seven times faster? 700 <laughs> percent. That's not a bad, uh, not a bad speed improvement there. Okay, that's strange. Let's move on to look me up string and see what happens. Okay, I'll just mark this one as no thanks and this one as yes please. Look me up string. Okay, so look me up string is already running pretty blisteringly fast. Let's see what happens if we mark the same as static. We got about, what was that, 35 millis there? There you go, 37 millis. So the string version of these little lookup table functions is about the same speed. Now, what is going on? Why is this happening? That's the interesting part. It all comes down to where the compiler stores our data when the program runs. So if we go up here to look me up, baby. When your program runs, there's a section of data cordoned off for your program. It's called the, the global or the static or the constant data. A place where your program can put things like this array just here. So when you run your program, it's going to put all of these numbers into an array somewhere in RAM so that it can read them. But the thing is, local data or data that's local to a function has to be copied to the stack. So the stack is another area of memory. And the stack is used for things like your return address, so that when you call functions, the CPU knows where to go back to. But the stack is also used for local variables. So if we've got something like this array just here, this is a local array, what's got to happen before this function runs every single time, this data has to be copied from global RAM somewhere over to the stack so that the function can use this data. If this is a lookup table just here and we're not going to change the values, then we can just mark it as static and we avoid all of that copying. So whenever we mark something as static in C++, what we mean is that there's one copy. And what's going to happen is that all of this data is going to be stored in static RAM somewhere. And it's not going to perform the copy when we run the function. It's just going to read the version, the single version from static RAM. That's why Look Me Up Baby runs so fast. We're avoiding that copy. So if this array was larger, uh, it wouldn't be uncommon to have, say, a 256 float lookup table or something like that, maybe it's going to take even longer. So the more data that you've got in your lookup table, the better off you'll be marking it as static. Okay, so if we come down here to int, if you remember, the integer version ran even faster. And I'm a little confused by this. I'm not really sure why. I will say that uh, integers, when you, when you perform a mov, um, when you perform the instruction mov, uh, the integers can actually be part of the instruction. So you don't have to read anything. Um, you can mov an integer into a register with, without reading RAM at all. Uh, I mean, you've got to read the uh, code section, but other than that, uh, so that might have something to do with it. Uh, but once again, if you mark your integer array as static, then there's one copy of it somewhere in static RAM, presumably, and it's going to run a whole lot faster. And once again, the, the size of this array matters a lot. If this array is gigantic, say 256 integers or larger, um, that copying from static RAM over to the stack is really going to start to hurt your performance. Um, so you can only use this trick when this is a lookup table, as we've got here. If you're going to be changing these values uh, mid-function, uh, then you might have to be a little bit more careful than what we're being here. Finally, look me up string. Now, why did this run at the same speed, even when we marked it as static? Well, it comes down to the fact that string constants, like this one that we've got just here, uh, they're actually stored in static global memory anyway. Yeah, so marking it as static really doesn't change where it's stored. Yeah, so that's going to run pretty much the same speed. Long story short, if you've got yourself an array that's acting as a lookup table and it's local to your functions, then you really want to mark it as static if you don't change the values in that array. 
That's about all that I wanted to say on this little trick. It's really interesting stuff. So I find it fascinating that so simple an idea and so fundamental an idea to performance is not taught to programmers. So if you've not heard this technique before, uh, I think it's really good to keep in mind whenever you've got lookup tables. Thank you very much for watching all. Uh, Agna, if you watch this video, cheers mate. You've done absolutely brilliant work for programmers all over the world, dude. Best manuals available on earth. <laughs> So cheers for that, mate, and uh, hopefully I can make some more videos going through some of the other interesting ideas presented in your manuals. And uh, let's just have a general explore through uh, performance programming as specified by the mighty Agna Fog. A bunch of links down below. There'll be um, links to the software that I've used to make this video and other things like your Patreon and a link to my Facebook page and all that sort of stuff. I'll also include links to uh, Agna Fogg's manuals and his webpage so you can have a bit of a look at uh, all five manuals and the forward comm specifications and that sort of thing. But uh, other than that, that's all I wanted to say. Have a good one.